So very shortly after that, I was like, you know what? I can't live this way anymore. I need a quick fix. Like so many people, I wanted a quick fix. I yeah, just wanted the problem to be taken away. gratification. Yeah. And in the surgery, I was in there for a really long time. And they said, okay, great news. We found where we can do this ablation. The bad news is that if we go through with this, you might have to wear a pacemaker for the rest of your life. And in that moment was like that typical scenario, life flashed before my eyes. I imagined what it would be like living with this. And I just thought, what has happened? Like, I'm not sick. I'm not supposed to be on medication. I'm in my second heart surgery. I'm in my 20s. This cannot be my life. And I just know that there was this inner wisdom that knew that there was a better way. Although I was working out for two hours a day on the Atkins diet, mm -hmm. my girlfriends called my house the house of free, carb free, this free, gluten free, that free, but I was still probably at my worst health. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Biohack It. I'm in LA and I'm also bringing you today somebody I've been following for a while. I loved her content. I loved who she is. It's Mana Sharma. And Mana, you have built something amazing for yourself. You're in health and wellness, you're a nutritionist, and you have just a really unique story, also your background. And so I wanted to bring you on and get to know you Thank and you. then talk about your perspective on why you, do you think Americans are so chronically ill these days? Thank you. I'm excited to connect with you. Yeah, I feel like it's overdue. Um, gosh, that's such a big question. I would say that there, it's a multifactorial approach that has to be taken. Um, there's a couple of different systems over the year that have just collapsed. So the first one obviously being our food system. Our food today is sprayed with like so many more chemicals. The fact that we're calling food that comes from boxed, packaged um, products, we're calling it food. And we're being tricked because, you know, it's labeled as healthy or keto or paleo or mm -hmm. gluten free. And we think that, especially as a parent, we think, oh, that's a safe option. But from my upbringing, we understand that everything and anything that comes from a box that has an ingredient that you don't understand what it is, it's dead food. It's not serving our health. I mean, there's so many things that we can dive into here. The quality of our drinking water, the level of chemicals that we're exposed to every single day. Gosh, I just dropped my kids off at school this morning. And like you look at all the things that are lingering that we typically wouldn't think of, you know, from air fresheners in the bathroom, the chemicals that you smell just walking around, the sanitization that's happening, the chemicals that are in paints and carpets, like you name it. There's so many it's toxins everywhere. that we're exposed to, let alone the personal care products that we're consuming every single day. And with my background in cosmetics, God, I was just like bathing in these products that were so toxic and so heavily perfumed that have a direct impact on our hormones and you know food cravings and our sleep and so many things so um yeah from our environment personal care products toxins that are lingering everywhere water and you know as a nutritionist hearing myself speak you know it's very easy to go doom and gloomy mm -hmm. on all of these things but i think that the exciting thing that's happening right now is that there's an awakening there's an understanding that, oh, you know what? All of those chemicals might not be good for me. You know what? There's a whole bunch of processed food that's out there and that's really expensive that might not be really good for me. And even the understanding of where food comes from. I don't think that those are questions that we ever asked before, but I don't know about you, but like both my parents had access to farms growing up. They knew how to grow food and we don't right? So, you know, the really beautiful things that people are asking these questions now, they're things that are trending on social media. We're having conversations like this and dialogue. So for people listening, you know, if it's one category, one area that they start with, just take ownership of one area. Cleaning up one thing will have so much impact on how you're feeling and how you're living. I, when I was researching you, and this was amazing, you really bring in the whole aspect of food and mindfulness. And then I dug a little deeper and I found out that you grew up in an ashram. And I wanted to dive in like your connection to how you're treating clients and seeing the world today. How much did that impact you? Yeah, obviously, like it really just shaped my journey and it brought me to where I am today. And the, the lessons that I grew up with at the ashram are the foundational truth to what I teach my clients today on how to heal uh, and step into health span. So um, my life 10 years ago, 15 years ago, actually looked very different. I come from the world of cosmetics mm -hmm. and it was a very fun job, but typical scenario in the fashion world, it was, you know, high stress, um, lots of travel, lots of drinking, late dinners, and lots of toxins from all of the products that we're using. Like I literally would wake up 
and put a mask full of makeup on every single day. They all had chemical perfumes mm. and toxic preservatives in it. I would bathe in body lotion that had chemicals in it and perfumes in it. Um, and then spray perfumes in the air everywhere. Like you walked into yeah. a cosmetic or a department store. It's like uh, you're bathing in all the toxins. Like the bathing. minute you walk in through that door, it's AC and all the toxins at it. You one got time. it. And so I was ingesting all of these yeah. things for about 10 years. And it got to a point where my health started to suffer. You know, I've always kind of suffered from anxiety, not understanding why. And things just got really, really bad when the anxiety was out of control, but my heart also started to get palpitations. So I kind of let it go, just attributed it to stress. And uh, I ended up getting a diagnosis for atrial tachycardia. And at this point in my life, I wasn't interested in getting to the root cause. I wasn't interested in wellness. Although I was working out for two hours a day on the Atkins diet, mm -hmm. my girlfriends called my house the house of free, carb free, this free, gluten free, mm -hmm. that free. But I was still probably at my worst health. So I went on a beta blocker prescription medication that caused me to gain about 45 pounds, become completely lethargic. Um, it did take care of my palpitations, but it did the opposite. Like I just had no energy to show up for my life. And so I said, well, God, there's got to be another way. So they said, well, we can do a surgery. In that surgery, this is in my 20s, um, it's called they do an ablation. Okay. So you're awake for the whole thing. Your heart is on a massive screen and they inject you with adrenaline and caffeine to try to induce these palpitations that I knew would only happen if I was out and moving around or moving my body. So they did an ablation where they burn off this kind of, they call it an electrical valve in your heart. It feels like a, an explosion going off in your chest. And then And you're morning, fully out or you're kind you're of semi-awake? You're awake the whole thing because you have to communicate with them to oh. let them know when you're going into It must have been so scary to be like eyes wide open. Yeah. Feeling this pressure. The surgeon asked me why I was crying. I'll never forget that. And it's like, God, buddy, you're used to doing this every single day. This is a big deal for me. So the morning after I woke up in the hospital and I still had the palpitations. So very shortly after that, I was like, you know what? I can't live this way anymore. I need a quick fix. Like so many people, I wanted a quick fix. I just wanted the problem to be taken gratification. away. Yeah. And in the surgery, I was in there for a really long time. And they said, okay, great news. We found where we can do this ablation. The bad news is that if we go through with this, you might have to wear a pacemaker for the rest of your life. And in that moment was like that typical scenario life flash before my eyes. I imagine what it would be like living with this. And I just thought, what has happened? Like, I'm not sick. I'm not supposed to be on medication. I'm in my second heart surgery. I'm in my twenties. This cannot be my life. And I just know that there was this inner wisdom that knew that there was a better way. So growing up, my dad, who's Indian, my mom, who's Danish, I've only ever known my mom to suffer from debilitating uh, autoimmune disease, so rheumatoid arthritis. I've only ever known my mom to be completely deformed. And when we went away in the summer to live at the ashram, the focus is on living in nature, away from screens, in community, um, practicing breath work every day, practicing meditation every day, practicing rest every okay. single day, eating a high-fiber, plant-focused meal every day, and I would see the impact of this growing up, but my memory was, you know, my dad tapping me on the shoulder at 5.30 in the morning to go meditate, right? You probably got to go to like fun summer yeah. camp. Yeah. No, I went to yoga camp. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Timeline Nutrition. Are you ready to unlock the secret to boundless energy and vibrant health no matter your age? Imagine your body as a bustling city with trillions of tiny power plants, your mitochondria working tirelessly to keep you alive and thriving. But here's the catch. But here's the catch. These cellular powerhouses are under constant attack from modern life's invisible enemies, toxins, processed food, and polluted air. As we age, our once effective cellular recycling system starts to slow down, leaving us feeling drained. Enter MitoPure, your cellular fountain of youth. This isn't just another supplement. It's a scientifically backed revolution in a bottle. MitoPure doesn't just mask symptoms, it dives deep into your cells, clearing out the cellular clutter and making room for vibrant, energetic newcomers. Imagine recapturing that youthful spark, the boundless energy, the quick recovery, the mental clarity. That's the MitoPure promise. It's not just about adding years to your life, but life to your years. Don't let another day pass feeling less than your best. Rejuvenate your cells, Reclaim your vitality and age with MitoPure. Visit timeline.com slash biohack it now and use my exclusive code 
biohack it, your future self will thank you. Clients today and taking the core things that you were taught in your childhood to heal yourself, to mm-hmm. then actually grow up, to incorporate those into your healing so you can come from a perspective of empathy. The big thing with traditional medicine sometimes is you go into see a doctor's office, they see you in such a narrow scope, they don't want to understand root cause, they don't want to give attention to traumas that make us who we are, and there's signals in our body, the, the body keeps score, that mm-hmm. something is not working. Yeah. Doctors really, and like, God bless them. They were taught to, you know, address the symptom, take away the pain. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the doctors did for me. Like it really did work. But the problem is that it was a bird's eye view at my health. There was no integration of my emotional body, my spiritual body. There was just looking at one physical component to my body. Right. Right. And this is the case for so many people today. And I think that there's an understanding that like we're so much more complex than that. You can't just treat one part of your body. Everything within us is connected. And this is where I believe like Eastern medicine is known all along. There's integration that has to happen between understanding how the body works synergistically together. And um, something where like if I have a dream for the future of where healthcare is going, it's going to go in that direction. Are you into like spirituality and stuff as well? Yeah, I would say, you know, on my first call most of my clients. Um, the first question is Mona, just tell me what do I need to eat? What's a supplement protocol? Yeah. Tell me how to fast and I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. Right. We're going to get started and this is going to be it. Right. But honestly, nine times out of 10 on that first call, when I ask people about, you know, the suffering that they have, the symptoms that they have, and I get them talking about it a little bit more, it all stems from a feeling of overwhelm, uh, an emotion within their body, their sadness. They instantly go to a story of when they were a kid. Like, I remember I used to do this as a kid, or I don't remember the last time that I was happy. I don't remember the last time I didn't feel stress and anxiety. I don't remember the last time where I didn't obsess over what I was eating or feel like I had to exercise right. hardcore. Like, they don't remember ever not be ever being in balance, right? And so a lot of the work that I do... As much as when I came back and I started working as a nutritionist, I kind of got into that trap of putting people on food, exercise, and supplement protocols, right? And for the most part, they worked until they didn't, right? Some people know this as yo-yo dieting. This is when in, you know, in our world, people are addicted to looking for the next protocol, the next red pill, the next guru to follow, the next, you know, style of medicine that's like trending or fasting, whatever it is. Um, but it ultimately always gets us back to the same base point where we're not doing those things anymore. So at the ashram, when you're left to breathe by yourself, meditate by yourself, be on your yoga mat by yourself, you're, you literally have to stop and you have to listen to everything within you. So what I say at the ashram, what happened is it was like shutting down all of the open running tabs that we all have running constantly in our brain and having to come into my body And for a lot of people, that's a really scary place. Like, what have I repressed in my body that I have to deal with? I don't want to deal with it. I'd rather over-caffeinate, overeat, over-alcohol, smoke addiction. outrun what's really going on in the background. And the beautiful thing with a practice like yoga and so many other practices like that is you're in your body. You're dealing with the tension that comes up. You're given time to kind of question, like, why does this feel so uncomfortable for me? And you process it. Like, I'm sure you've done yoga and... It's not uncommon to see somebody have like an emotional release in class, a tear that falls, or Mm. if you do your yoga teacher training, a lot of us are getting up and walking out of class because we just need to take take a minute to ourselves, right? To see what happened. I think that for the first time in, gosh, maybe a couple decades at that point, I really um, tuned in, yeah, to address all that stuff. So I think that when it comes to healing, you have to address your spirit. And I would say treat it as the ultimate return to your, your true self. Like, what was the energy of who you were when you came into this world? I think the way you're describing spirituality is so important as well because it's connecting to yourself. And that's where I feel personally people have become very disconnected. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they belong. There's a sense of loneliness and community that we've created. And so we've fallen away from what it means to be in community, to be part of kin. And I think that's also the root cause of a lot of people's health issues Mm -hmm. is who do I belong with? Where do I belong? Where are those questions? They're so unsure of themselves. And it's this spiritual connectivity that has to come into treating them, you know, all over. Like it's not just about the supplements. It's not just about the food. It's not just about your sleep, but it's about having your self connection. 
Yeah. And there's two sides of that coin, right? On one side, I say that healing today has become a very self-centered approach. We're so concerned with how we look, how we feel, doing it on our own, having to figure it out, suffering in silence, dealing with our thoughts and emotions, trying to put on a front to everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, in social media, we make everything look perfect. Um, when, when we think about the other side of that, we all used to live with at least our families, our extended families, especially from mm -hmm. our culture, yes. right? We lived in tribes or community where there would have been a lot more support. And at the ashram, that's exactly what there was. You're making relationships with other people. You're breaking bread with other people. A lot of people know what you're coping with and dealing mm -hmm. with. And there's a support system to kind of help you feel like you're not in this alone. Mm -hmm. We are all here suffering and it's going to be okay. And you are healing. It's not about when you're going to get to you are healed. It's like you're healing every you're day always in healing, this moment. Yeah. Let's do it together. And I think that there's such a refreshing take that happens when you're in community with other people so that it's not so self-centered. And um, I think your body becomes a lot more resilient because, you know, you mentioned this idea of being alone. Loneliness, loneliness is a major area of... Um, or how should I say that? Loneliness, loneliness is a big contributor to aging and mortality, right? You're more likely to get sick. You're more likely to die at an earlier age, earlier age if you are lonely. So community is everything. And I think that if you can find your spiritual community and uh, community in general, if your you tribe, use those yeah. roles together, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I wanted to, in case somebody's listening to this and they don't know what an ashram is, can you describe it in your words? Yeah, so people always ask which, which one. There's so many different types of ashrams mm -hmm. that are all around the world. I grew up with the Shivananda Ashram um, in Montreal originally. And then when I was old enough, I started going to the Bahamas. Obviously, it was on Paradise Island and the ocean and the beach. It was oh. just, it was magic. So the beautiful thing about an ashram is that there is a daily set schedule. Um, and at first, it feels really good having every hour of the day pretty Time much for accounted for. You have a place to be. Again, those shutting down the tabs in the mind, it gives you something to focus on, right? So you're up pretty early, and first thing in the morning, you're sitting in silence, so in meditation. Um, after that, you're in community, likely listening to a spiritual talk or doing some chanting as a community, which is so therapeutic. Uh, you move on to a two-hour breathwork and yoga session, outside, taking in the energy of nature, super healing for the body. And then you're eating a really nourishing plant focused meal. The energy around food at the ashram is off, often seen as like energy from the earth mm -hmm. that's designed to help your body thrive. Um, and then the afternoon is spelt, spent mostly in some sort of a, a spiritual practice or some sort of karma yoga where you're giving back or personal study. And then you repeat the same cycle at night. So yoga, meditation, um, chanting, a spiritual talk, lights out, and you repeat the next day. So imagine having that schedule not only for a week, but up to like a month or two months. That's exactly what I did when I went to heal. And I remember like just wishing, I just want to get out of here. I want to do something different. And then coming back into the real world, losing that structure in my life felt like I didn't know what to do. I felt scattered again. I felt lost and I very easily went back into the trap of being busy. We're also good at being busy. In fact, we're busier than we've ever been before. If you ask a girlfriend, how are you? I'm so busy. So busy. Yeah. I asked you how you were, right? We're all so, so, so busy. And I think that if we can take more control over our schedule, I teach my clients how to bring the structure of an ashram into the city, into their lives, because we can use our calendar as our or boss or as our spiritual outline in terms of um, how to heal our best, how to thrive, how to schedule the things that really matter, how to schedule the right foods. We just we have to make the time for it. Otherwise, we'll simply lose time. How is it for you coming out of this beautiful, structured, yet very healing environment that you lived in for many years into the hustle and bustle of like New York, the corporate life? Like New York, in, like, New York is probably one of the busiest places on the planet. Yeah. And it's the energy is complete chaos, you know, and it's amazing in your twenties, but it can be very draining at the same time. How, how was the adjustment for you? So going back to that point of anxiety is my blueprint. Yeah. I think that growing up, um, I have amazing parents, but I remember my dad always focusing on like having a to-do list or being on the path of personal growth. Mm -hmm. And so much 
so that it became an addiction. Like I was always addicted to the courses, the programs, how do I better myself? Which sounds like that's like pretty okay. It's not bad, right? But what that meant for me is that I was always looking to feel or be in a place that was different from how I was in the present moment, right? I was not grounded despite my background at the ashram. I knew about this, but I became very addicted to how do I get somewhere else faster? That felt awesome. You do. Yeah. It's a cultural thing. I think South Asians are wired to just yeah. be like, and the next thing, and, and the, the next, next thing. thing. And, and it's all of Asia. If you look at us as a population, you know, there are all these running jokes about how strict our parents are and nothing's ever good enough. And they want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. They set you up with these really high expectations. And it's like, okay, so this is great. Baked up. What is next? Like that is the, the baseline of our culture, you know? Absolutely. And I'm like, I'm a type. So even in this world, I'm so grateful that the people I work with, they're like, Mona, you're so calming and soothing. Often inside me, it's like a ticking time bomb. I'm like, okay, great. I'm already thinking about 20 other things that I need to do in that workout class. And I love hardcore and I love intensity. One area of science that is extremely exciting is supplements, but is also an area that creates a lot of confusion. Today, I want to talk about a supplement that's been a game changer for me, Seeds. DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. This little powerhouse is packed with 24 clinically and scientifically studied strains. And get this, it's engineered with something called Viacap, which helps it survive the treacherous journey through your digestive system. This means it actually reaches your gut alive and ready to work its magic. Since I started taking DSO-1, I've noticed a lightness in my stomach that I hadn't felt in years. It's like my gut and I are finally on the same page. And bonus, my skins mean looking clearer and more vibrant too. What I love about Seed is their commitment to science. They're not just throwing together some random bacteria and calling it a day. They've got numerous clinical trials published in top scientific journals. So really you have access to some of the best minds giving you the top science. And let's talk convenience. I just pop my DSO-1 capsule in the morning and I'm good to go. Now I know what you're thinking, another supplement, but trust me, this isn't just another pill. It's a scientifically validated way to support your digestive health, reinforce the gut barrier integrity, and promote a healthy immune system through the gut immune access. Ready to give your gut the love it deserves? Go to seed.com slash biohack it and use code 25 biohack it for 25% off your first month of DSO-1. That's 25% off at seed.com slash biohack it code 25 biohack it. And that's okay. But I think this is where we need to honor our parts, right? Yeah. They don't have to define us so much. So going to New York, when I used to work there it was so exciting. You become alive. There's always something to do. But it was ultimately for me a complete distraction from how I wanted to feel in my body. And now if I go to New York, it's like it's two days in and then we go back to the norm. Yeah. That's how it is for me as well. I feel like I get the adrenaline, but I'm like, I need to go back to Miami because I'm now more regulated. And mm. growing up as a South Asian, I wasn't necessarily regulated because it's always like, go, 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 go. And what's the next thing you're going to go do? So I feel that when I, when I moved to Miami 10 years ago and really the last five years when I got into health and wellness and got passionate about my own healing journey. Yeah. Um, both my parents passed away as well, like very close uh, to mm -hmm. each other. It made me stop and think about the things that really matter and don't matter and what I want to be doing with my time yeah. and the kind yeah. of people I want to be around and questions I hadn't really asked myself and being okay with being a little quiet. I'm sorry to hear about your parents. Thank you. And yeah, when I got sick, like on that surgery table... And even looking at my mom's health, you don't need to experience it. We can just say nothing matters if you don't have your health. Time stops. Life mm. stops. And I think that living in today's world where, you know, how we started this conversation, we're so bombarded with things that are outside of what the human physiology needs to heal and feel balance. And we're struggling to make it work. And we're pushing like a boulder uphill to try to make it work. Yeah. And we're proving to ourselves that we can do it because we're strong and we're resilient, right? Women especially just like, you know, they wear this sense of doing more as a badge of honor when inside it's just depleting us. So I think that, you know, for your listeners, I think it's really important to understand how do you want to feel every single day? 
And maybe you live in New York City and that's like really that exciting. That works for you. But you've got to set a paradigm up within your schedule again that enables you to tap into what makes you feel restored and at ease. And, you know, what are the three or four things that you can practice every single day that are going to bring you happiness and, and joy? Joy, because that's the baseline. I think everything you do, do it with joy. All, take all the lessons. You have to be in a career also because it brings you joy. The money is, of mm-hmm. course, important. I always say that it will follow you. But you have to create daily joy for yourself and daily gratitude. And if you don't have those two things, it's hard to feel fulfilled because otherwise you just feel like you're a slave to something else and you don't have autonomy and ownership over your body, your emotions, and who you are as a person. What's wild is when I'm working with my clients, I help them understand what their like fundamental core value is, right? So I don't know if you've ever seen a chart of vibration because we can now... Oh. So I used to use the word vibration in my practice like a decade ago, and people were like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like so woo-woo, that's your ashram hippie stuff, right? <laughs> but now we could actually measure vibration. So if there, You can? There's an actual can. chart that measures it? So if you pull, wow. I forget the, the name of the person, but on this vibrational chart, you can measure frequencies of joy and happiness and just feeling peace in your body, and then down to feeling a sense of just like apathy. But then there's guilt, and worry and stress and fear and the worst one is shame and so helping my clients uncover like what they really wanted their driving force of a core value to be in their life most of them if I were to ask them how they wanted to feel every single day what do they say I want to feel accomplished I want to feel wealth I want to feel productive I want to feel proud I want to feel um empowered and it would take so many people, it would take 20 minutes for them to just get to a word like, oh yeah, I just want to feel happy. Like, I just want to feel happy to be alive. I want to feel really joyful in my body. I want to feel a sense of peace throughout the day, like complete disconnection because you're so focused on the culture of doing and being and being seen a certain way. And like the accolade of, if I get there, that'll make me feel like happy. But it means like, just like me, I was always chasing Right. It's like I feel we're putting so much importance on the outward world and what that once we hit that milestone, how we'll feel once not realizing and Joe Dispenza's work talks about this, right? You need to create that from within yeah, and the external yeah. will come. But you have to create like don't rely on a partner, don't rely on a promotion, don't rely on moving somewhere to get those things. Create that in your day to day so your body starts recognizing it so you can actually drop into it. And then it's a law of attraction. You will bring that into your life. And I think all of us is, have felt it, right? Like when we come into alignment or what I work with my clients on often is a feeling of heart frequency. We're not living in our heads anymore. We drop into our hearts. We're so tuned to what really matters to us. We make better decisions, whether it's around the foods that we eat, the conversations that we have, the people that we hang around, the, the sleep that we're getting. And when we're in that type of alignment and we feel good, more opportunity comes, more synchronicity comes. You're open to more the, this idea of, abundance whatever that means to you and yeah Joe Dispenza is like one of the incredible doctors who's like validating this world of woo-woo and just making it very scientific and and ways for us to look at and be like this is practical I can study this I can check your brain waves when this happens and I think that this is we're having some sort of a meditation practice meditation practices don't have to simply be sitting you know kind of just hoping for it to be over trying to focus on your breath and stop your thoughts it doesn't have to be it you can meditate in very different ways find the best way that suits you but with a meditation practice done with consistency you tap into these moments or these gaps where it's like an exhale you literally feel your shoulders melt away from your ears and that's the remembering that I'm talking about like you remember what it feels like in your body when you're at peace and that causes you to you know stay on the cycle of seeking and choosing more of what serves you You have such a beautiful, soothing voice. Have you ever considered recording meditations for your clients? I'm just, you know, just listening to you and the way you communicate. And it's it's, it's just a beautiful way of communicating. You should build some audios. I would definitely tune into that. I've got some audios. And the funny thing is, is the one consistent compliment I'm very honored that I'm getting um, since I was a little girl was to record things or uh, my clients would just say, I just wish I could wake up with you. Like what's your voice? Yeah, in my your voice is a gift. <laughs> thank you. It really, really thank is. You, Cause I listened you. to you and I was like, wow, like 
the way you communicate, the way you're able to put somebody else at ease, yeah. it's really a gift. Everybody has different gifts and all of us have that, but each one of us is unique. And I think really, Mona, using your voice is really, Thank you. really powerful and impactful. I know everybody listening is like, hey, you had a background in beauty. So personal care products are some of the biggest endocrine disruptors Ugh. when it comes to women. Yep. <laughs> what are the swaps you would say top five, top six that you think women are not paying attention to on personal care and then things they have in their homes? And what are some brands? Because there's also a lot of noise out there. What are brands that you love and why do you love using them? Mm, good question. And there's so many brands. Okay, so let's start off with, um, I want you to just think about when you wake up first thing in the morning, um, from the time that you wake up to the time that you leave your house for the day or start work, what are the products that you're using? And those are the areas that you want to look at first. So for many of us, it's toothpaste with fluorides, with chemicals in them, mouthwashes that have petroleum-based products, you know, blue and green dyes that are completely unnecessary, disrupting our oral microbiome, which actually disrupts our gut microbiome. So start off there. Um, for women, personal hygiene, right? So tampons and pads, they're toxic. They're full of bleach and chemicals. I know using something like a Diva Cup might be uncomfortable to get started with, but like with practice, it's so easy and you're going to question why or how you could have ever put something chemical into your body. Then you look at whatever you're putting onto your skin. In my cosmetic days, like just start thinking about um, face wash, serum, toner, um, uh, SPF, foundation, primer, bronzer, blush, lip product, eye product, eyeshadow, eyebrow gel, like you name it, there's so many things. Body care products, everything that you're putting onto your skin penetrates 10 times faster than what you eat. You know me, I'm always on the hunt for ways to level up my health game. And let me tell you, I've learned that when it comes to overall wellness, all roads lead to the gut. 70% of the human immune system resides in the gut, making it a crucial factor in overall health. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce to you our newest partner, Jona, the most advanced microbiome company on the market. If you're like me, always looking at ways to optimize your health and well-being, you're going to love this product. Jona isn't just another health app. It's a cutting edge AI platform that analyzes your microbiome to unlock your body's full potential. Imagine having a personal health detective that dives deep into your gut to uncover the root cause of your symptoms. That's Jonah for you. They use state-of-the-art technology to get a comprehensive picture of your gut health. This isn't science fiction. It's a personalized model of your biology that helps predict how different factors affect your health. Personalized nutrition recommendations. Based on your unique microbiome profile, Jonah provides tailored dietary advice to optimize your health and enhance longevity. Whether you're aiming to boost your energy, improve your digestion, or simply feel your absolute best, Jonah is your new secret weapon. It's like having a team of microbiome scientists in your pocket working 24-7 to help you achieve your health goals. Ready to experience the precision of wellness? Visit Jonah, J-O-N-A, Dot health today and start your journey towards optimal health. You are what you absorb. Right? It's your largest organ, your skin. Yeah, you yeah. got it. So personal care products and cosmetics for sure. But if you really want to go for it, look at the things, the constants that are always there. Um, God, if I smell Tide anymore, I'm just like, it's so toxic. Yeah. So what are you washing your clothes with? What are you cleaning your house with? Um, I know in my podcast studio, the cleaners keep putting in those like Glade plugins. It's so bad everywhere. for you. It's so bad for you. So when I worked at Dior, I actually stopped getting my cycle, my menstrual cycle. I was in perimenopause in my twenties. I also had PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, the combination of those two things, doctors are like, if you're able to have kids, it's going to be really challenging for you. And I believe them. And one of the most searched topics today, hormone imbalance, right? Mood swings, um, PCOS, uh, PMS also like these things that women are suffering from, we're not going to these like foundational things that are, that we're using every single day that could be causing us harm. So go clean up in all of those areas. There's so many incredible companies. Um, if you go to my website, there's a list of like what Mona loves, you'll find some much safer alternatives there. But at the end of the day, just use the motto. If you're looking at an ingredient list, 
look at the ingredients of not only what you're eating, but what your the products that you're using. If you don't know what an ingredient is, neither will your body. Yeah. It's a chemical product. Okay. If there's any colors that are in it, throw it in the trash. It is garbage for you. It's not going to serve your health. They should be banned as they are in Europe. And that's another thing. If you look at the list of regulations that go into Europe and why people are healthier and safer over there is, I don't know why, whether it's our food systems, whether it's personal care products, the U.S. has just not got the same regulations and framework. So Americans are chronically ill, in my opinion, for so many different reasons. But um, I, when, it, when you're looking at patients' charts, like let's say over the last like decade and stuff, are you seeing people get more inflamed like as they progress? And what are the core reasons for that? Is it food, personal care, um, seed oils? Like yeah. what is going on here? Because I feel like we're like a ticking time bomb. Yeah. And there's like, there's, there's so many aspects to this, right? So when I work with my clients, yes, I do a personal deep dive into their history, their emotional uh, bodies, their, their distress levels, um, their schedules and what they're putting themselves up against every single day. But then I also like to match that with the gifts of modern day medicine and I'm doing their biomarker testing. So I typically do a full blood panel, a saliva test if that's possible to check on their cortisol and stress levels, um, stool sample if someone's game. I talk about poop every single day. I think you should understand your bowel functions and what your stool means. So looking at all that, I can then get a better sense of where this inflammation is coming from. So for example, if I do a food sensitivity test and someone comes back with a laundry list of food sensitivities, it doesn't mean that they're allergic to those foods and that they have to remove them for a long period of time. That gives me insight to the quality of their gut microbiome. It means their gut is probably inflamed or they might be somebody who has a leaky gut syndrome and we simply have to put them on a, a gut healing protocol. But digestion is so much more than just our gut health. It's how we digest and assimilate our food. So maybe the quality of their di digestion needs to be improved. This is a foundation to Ayurveda. At the ashram, we always practice this. So we would eat foods that were typically cooked and easier to digest. They were cooked using lots of healing, healing herbs, um, good quality fats or ghee, which is really great for healing the gut also and soothing the digestive system. We don't drink iced beverages because iced beverages just put out the fire of digestion. We want that stomach to be nice and hot to break things down. Um, so that's just one aspect. If I'm looking at a woman's hormone panel, like through a Dutch test or something like that, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because we need to understand, well, what is the source of inflammation? So we talked about the personal care products. We talked about the, um, the toxins that people are exposed to just living in today's modern world. But then there's so many other things, right? Like there's stress levels. There could be a genetic component that I mean, you know, they don't have to live with it for the rest of their lives, but we need education on how we can reverse that. Um, there could be uh, poor sleep. There could be mold exposure. There could be unresolved trauma from when they were little that their bodies just can't process anymore, right? So it's a multifactorial approach, but I would say to answer your question, first and foremost, we clean up shop. So if you have a nutritionist in your kitchen, what wouldn't you want me to see? And if you don't want me to see it, chances are it's not serving your health. Then we move into your bathroom. What wouldn't you want me to see? Or what do you think could be toxic? The Colgates, the Listerines, the hairspray, the hair oils, all the hair products that we're using also. Um, and then we're going to look into the products that you're using. You know, we live in a world where getting on social media, we see these like ads for supplements that are the next thing, right? Like this is the thing that you should be taking. Or herbs, for example. At the ashram, if you meet with an Ayurvedic practitioner, if you're going on an herbal type protocol of supplements, it's a multifactorial synergistic approach of how those herbs should work for your constitution in that moment at that time. And yet here we are in the Western world, just throwing things down the hatch, taking something because it's trending, taking something because we heard it was good for us. And they might be things that are good for you, but if you don't know that the foundation of your health is optimal, that your digestion is on point, that you're having proper bowel movements, that your sleep is great, your circadian rhythm is functioning really, really well, then chances are you want to take a step back from all of those things and just start at the basics. And start building yourself up from there. I feel like people get overwhelmed easily, which is why it's so important to find a practitioner like yourself and somebody they connect with because there's so much noise mm -hmm. out there and yeah. brands are making claims that are not true and they've just got a lot of marketing dollars and you know people don't have time to do the research. 
and then they take too much. It doesn't work for them. The dosage is not right. And then they're overwhelmed and they're frustrated. So I always urge people, find a practitioner that works for you. Connect with them. See if their process aligns with yours and let them guide you because yeah, yeah. that's what they've professionally studied to do. And they are really the experts. So don't try to figure it out on your own. Look, we're all, as we said before, busy, we're tired, mm-hmm. we're overworked, we're overstressed. So anything that seems appealing that could help me, give it to me. Yeah. I want to take it, right? But we're throwing more into a body that's not functioning. Receptive to it. You yeah. got it. So like start at the, the basics. One, op- optimize your digestion. Make sure that you're digesting your food. If you suffer from bloating, from gas, from heartburn, from constipation or diarrhea, those are key symptoms that you cannot ignore heal your digestion Two, sleep optimize your sleep get the rest that you need um at our house when the sun goes down the lights start to dim we start winding things down in a perfect world i'm off my my screens for two to three hours before bed it doesn't happen all the time but if i am on a screen i'm wearing blue light blocking glasses and i have some sort of a wind down practice like going outside onto my balcony At night, looking up at the sky so that my body understands, oh, it's nighttime. Start creating the hormones that my body needs to go into a deep sleep. Rising with the sun, right? This is another big thing, thankfully, that this is trending. But our ancestors would have gotten up early, gone outside, and looked up at the sky or worked in the fields, right? So one of the best things that you can do first thing in the morning, before looking at your phone, before making your coffee, take a glass of purified water. Go stand outside, maybe with your feet on grass, or at least looking up at the sky. Get those bright red rays of sun coming into your body. Or sometimes for me, it's still dark out. It's still beneficial. Mm -hmm. Look up at the sky, right? Um, And then nourish yourself. So nourish yourself in the way that you need energy for your day ahead. Food has a vibration. It is loaded with vitamins and minerals and nutrients and fiber that is designed to help us thrive. Fasting is an option for some people, not not for all all people. Right, you have to work with a practitioner maybe to figure out what the best fasting cycle should be for you. But yeah, I think that the foundation is just like nourish yourself first. And then when you're in a state of feeling a bit of balance, your sleep is optimized, your bowel movements are optimized, your mood is stable, then look at the the extras that you can add in. And then you could throw in. You talked a little bit about in your 20s going into perimenopause, which can be mm-hmm. so scary yeah. f- for a young woman. How is your fertility journey like? You know, you have beautiful kids now. How, how was it? Yeah, I was really surprised when I got um, that diagnosis. It was from a woman, too. And it was a woman that said, you know what? It might be really hard for you to have babies, right? So for a lot of us, when we hear somebody in a white lab coat giving us a statement or defining our health, we live with that belief system. Mm-hmm. So from that day moving forward, I remember thinking to myself, well, you know, what? maybe I don't want kids anyways. Maybe. Meanwhile, having children is like the one and only thing that I've I've ever known. It was like the one constant thing that I, I knew I wanted to be a mom. So the most heartbreaking thing that could have happened to me. Um, and I never had a regular cycle. So what's crazy is that since I started getting my menstrual cycle, my cycle would happen pretty much every three months. And when you're old enough to start going for pelvic floor exams and stuff like that, again, another diagnosis of irregular cycle, this is abnormal, let's put you on birth control. So I thought, well, there's something wrong with me. I better go on birth control. And now we're learning like having a month, you as somebody with your own unique constitution and how you're brought up and your DNA and how you live life, three months could be your normal, right? Yes. So I was put on birth control, told that I had PCOS, perimenopausal. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm screwed. Maybe I don't want kids. When I got off birth control pill, the birth control pill, um, I guess I was like, in my late 20s, and it was one of the hardest things ever. Like, I remember my body suffered. Um, I had insane acne. My hair was oily. Like, I would wash it in the morning and have to wash it again at night for like three months. It was the most insane process. But fortunately, there was an Ayurvedic practitioner in my ear talking to me about the benefits of detoxing. So I was doing a great detox protocol, doing panchakarma and stuff like that. Um, and then when my husband and I were ready to have kids, I actually got pregnant very easily. Amazing. It was awesome. And I'll never forget, um, I got pregnant with twins and waited till I was about eight or nine weeks, uh, flew home to tell my brother who also had twins that I was pregnant. So you have twins in your family. Have twins in our family. 
told him, knocked on his door. I remember it was morning in Toronto, knocked on his door. I'm pregnant. The joy that came with that went for an ultrasound two hours later, and then there was no heartbeat. This episode is brought to you by BioOptimizers. Are you tired of tossing and turning at night, unable to quiet your racing mind? Four out of five Americans aren't getting enough magnesium, and it's affecting their sleep and overall well-being. I used to lie awake for hours worrying about my to-do list for the next day. It was a vicious cycle that left me exhausted and unproductive. That all changed when I discovered Magnesium Breakthrough. Since adding it to my nightly routine, I've been falling asleep much faster, staying asleep much longer, and waking up refreshed. It's been a game changer for my sleep quality and energy levels. What sets Magnesium Breakthrough apart is its unique blend of all seven forms of magnesium, Unlike other supplements that offer just one or two types, this comprehensive formula supports everything from stress management to muscle recovery. Experience the power of optimal magnesium levels for yourself. Go to biooptimizers.com slash biohackit and use promo code biohackit to save 10% on your first order. Subscribe for even bigger discounts and free gifts ensuring your monthly supply is always guaranteed. Don't let sleepless nights hold you back. Try Magnesium Breakthrough today. And so I miscarried twins. And again, what did doctors say? Oh, it's so normal. With your background, you know, it's kind of like, what did you expect? Mm -hmm. This is going to happen to you. You know, keep trying. Try again when you're ready. And this doctor also didn't give me a DNC. So I actually had to go into labor at home. And like, if anyone's listening, had to go through that. Like the doctors didn't warn me. They kind of made it sound like it was just going to be like getting a really heavy cycle. It wasn't like there was full contractions and everything. And it's also something that you don't recover from. So I'm hovering on this for a second because I think that too many people, too many women are being told that miscarriages are normal and they're expected to deal with it. And women also like it is, there's a bit of shame. Like, oh my, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And this is me as a nutritionist yeah. at that point too. Like me as a nutritionist couldn't stay pregnant. Like shame on me. What did I do? What's right. wrong with my body? Right. So um, when I got pregnant with my firstborn, my son, honestly, Iman, it was the first time that I experienced 100% complete self-love. I would not let myself, I knew the power of my thoughts. I would not let myself talk to my body poorly. I would not criticize myself over my food choices. I would, you know, sleep like I love myself, drink like I love myself, eat like my, I love myself. And sure enough, I had a beautiful, healthy, incredible pregnancy. And he reflects that probably and because that's that. what the mom was reflecting at the time. You got it. And I would say like my health during my, both my pregnancies, I have a daughter and a son, um, were incredible. Like my body just became vibrant. I stepped into my femininity and it right. felt like a superpower. If I can grow life and I can heal, right. my body has I can this do wisdom anything. to grow life. Yeah. Why didn't I tap into this before? Why wasn't I ever told that I have this superpower of healing? Right. Yeah. It's and so that woke it all up for me. And the messaging with my clients shifted. Like you are your healer. I can't help you heal. I can guide you to doing the right steps, but you have to take ownership. So you know, never ignore the whispers that you have of symptoms. It's your body communicating with you to listen and tune in so that you can find exactly what you need to step into your best health. That's such beautiful. It's such a beautiful way to come to that because you practice what you preach. And that is why, you know, I've always found your content so appealing is because you come from a place of empathy and compassion. Mm-hmm. You're not speaking at people or to them. You're speaking with them. You're yeah. like, hey, this is my journey. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been through. And then I'm telling you kind of from what I've experienced. Yeah. And I do think traditional medicine sometimes the the doctors are not taught that connection of empathy and compassion because you're just another number. Come in, come out, let's go. And they don't take a minute to stop and think, hey, am, is the news I'm delivering going to impact the person? Am I just gaslighting them and just dismissing them? Am I really spending time to talk to my patient? Yeah, it's kind of unknown territory, but also because they've never been trained to do yeah. that, right? And I have so much sympathy for doctors who are on the other end of this right now, kind of at the other end of the frustration mm-hmm. that we're feeling like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you talk to me about the impact of going on this medication or giving me that diagnosis? And they just didn't know any they better. They don't know any better. And they spent a lot of money to get an education that their intention was to help people, Right. So yeah, I think today, you know, be very mindful and thank you for acknowledging that about my page because especially after COVID, 
I don't know about you, but I would go online. I'm like, whoa, every single person that I'm scrolling on is telling me to do something different, do this, do that. They don't know who I am. They don't know my medical background. They know nothing about me, but they're talking about. As if they know you and understand you. And I think taking person, if if you can't, do you have the time and obviously the resources and everything, please take, in my opinion, a personalized approach to your health, understand your unique autonomy, your traumas, your stories, what makes you you, and that is the direction you should be going in. Ask yourself one question, okay? So this is what I give to all my clients when I start working with them. Write down three things. If I could take away three pieces of step of suffering, three of your symptoms, what would they be? Put pen to paper so that you just know what they are, mm-hmm. right? And make them about you, not what you think you should be doing, but like how are you feeling? And then take action on just those three things. That's yeah. it. Simplify it. Yeah. Turn down the noise of social media even for a while. Go off it. And even when they're choosing a practitioner, go in with the practitioner, not in a rush, but write down if you're working, hey, this is how I'd like to feel at the end. These are my goals of how I'd like to emotionally feel and physically feel by the time we're done with our protocol or program together. Sadly, one of the hacks, look, I have patient or I have clients who have worked with the same doctor since they were little kids. Mm-hmm. They never want to leave them. But that right. doctor only knows what they know. And so here's the script. Go into your doctor, say, hey, I'm working with a holistic nutritionist. Mm-hmm. I want to understand every single system of my body. Can we do a full blood panel of every single part of my body to help me understand what this is? Oh, but you're so healthy. You know, you're young, you're Cast resilient. Lady. This is yeah. normal. You don't need it. No, but I'm working with someone right now. I really want to take action to my future and my health span. Mm-hmm. Can we do this? And if your doctor pushes back even more, then it's really time for you to find a doctor who's your partner in healing. Yeah. So I'm going to share a little personal story based on kind of what you said. So I, you know, recently, I'm 41 now, so I was late to the whole fertility thing. We were trying to adopt for a while and we're like, okay, let's try for one in one. You know, we'll do one biological once. So I started doing mm-hmm. my testing just to see like, what is my AMH? What's my FSH? I walk into a doctor's office in Miami, one of the best fertility clinics down there, one of the big ones. And the doctor happens to be South Asian. She's actually Indian. I sit down with her and I ask her, I was like, hey, this is my history. This is what I want to do. We go into our room and we do, um, you know, um, a, a scan. We do a vaginal ultrasound. And she goes right away, um, hey, you have massive fibroids on your uterus. And I said, mm-hmm. okay, well, and she's like, South Asians, Asians tend to get these a lot. Mm-hmm. So I ask her right away. I'm already in that knowing that, you know, with my age, I've had other complications. We're exploring the route of surrogacy, right? So I'm already kind of prepared. I also know so many people in the medical community. I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. So I get in saying, that's okay. And she's like, you know, if you carried, um, you have, I was like, so what are the downfalls of something like this? And she's like, you know, it's a higher chance of um, miscarriage because your fibroids are pretty big, whatever it may be. Your your uterus is weakened. No problem. Uh, But I ask her, why do I have, you're South Asian, you're telling me this news, why do I have fibroids? And she turned around and said, I can't tell you that. And I stopped there to think to myself, I said, I luckily came in really well prepared. I came in knowing I know a lot of people I can ask questions to. I'm lucky. You know, the time, the resources, and, and the community to go to. But imagine a woman walks in like yourself, the way you did, and they said, well, this is normal. But then why is this normal? What is the root cause of my body doing this? Why is my body creating this? What is going on? Yeah. And um, I walked down and I was like, I, I feel bad. I feel bad for so many women who deal with yeah. this every single day. And I called, I made three phone calls to incredible functional doctors. And they were like, well, the thing is you have insulin resistance, which is causing the fibroids. And South Asians tend to have that a lot mm-hmm. because of our background. Um, we also struggle gaining muscle mass and there's all this stuff going on. But I had answers. But in my mind, I'm like, if I was her, I would have just instead answered, I don't know fully the reasons. I don't know the data and research. Um, but I can try to look it up for you and give you access to somebody like yourself who can maybe better fit to get you that part because I'm not the expert. But what annoys me is this all-knowing nature that sometimes Western doctors have instead of just being humble and saying, I don't know because I wasn't trained in that or I can't tell you the root cause because I'm very specialized in this one field. And that that walked, I walked away going like, it, it really infuriates me. Yeah, it's that whole thing. Like, just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. It's okay. Right? And I would want a doctor to be really curious. Like, oh, you know what? I'm seeing more cases of fibroids or PCOS. 
where does this come from? How can I understand more about it or at least give education on where my clients or my patients can go? Or have resources like yourself that they can call and say, I don't know, but let me connect you to this person and you take it from there. You got it. So metabolic dysfunction, especially for South Asians, I don't think it's necessarily an issue that our ancestors had to deal with because the diet that we used to, like whenever used to be McDonald's and KFC and all this like processed food in places like India, right? But now with a diet that's super, super high in starch, super, super high in the amount of chemicals that we're mm-hmm. spraying on all of those foods, right? Um, it is something to be mindful of. So I'm even worrying. I have no connection to two levels. I just, yeah. I love them. I'm I saw that. I actually just ordered <laughs> myself one because I'm interested in knowing oh, like great. what's going on with my body. So I love levels is a continuous glucose monitor that I'm wearing it right now. Not that I, I need it. I think I have pretty good understanding of your body. I love this company because they they help you understand your physiology mm-hmm. and how your body reacts to specific foods. But I do this with my clients as like a support system. So we can say like, hey, how did you spike? Look at this food. Because everyone's this- different. You know, a bowl of white rice combined with veggies and a protein could make your body react in a completely different Mm -hmm. way than mine, right? So understanding your metabolic function is really, really key. Um, And then two, your toxic burden. So um, you can actually do a total toxin blood lab to understand how many toxins are within your your blood. And it's so important, for example, heavy metals to understand, do you have a lot of heavy metal exposure based on where you live or the products that you're using or the foods that you're consuming? Because if they're not dealt with over time, those are going to contribute to your endocrine symptoms, right? So you want to understand that toxic load as well. It's just shocking to me. Um, that it's so nice that you educate your clients in this way because some practitioners don't do that. Environmental toxins is not a consideration for them. Yeah, I said without testing for environmental toxins, how are you treating clients? Because you don't, we're so overloaded. The chemtrails, our food is sprayed with stuff. Water, like I tell people one thing, Plastics. do not touch tap water. Don't touch or, tap water and never drink out of a plastic bottle. Hard stop. I came with one today. Don't judge me. No, and sometimes it's out of necessity. I, could, I just had to grab it. But I always think to myself, I'm like, I have a heavy load of microplastics in my body. I did this IGL test. I don't know if you're familiar. It's a lab in Germany. And they test for every single environmental toxin Toxins, yeah. in your yeah. body. Yeah. And I had such high nickel in my body, other things that I didn't know about. And I'm like, this is a perfect storm. Yeah. And again, this is where like, we really have to take control. So give yourself some grace. You're traveling, Mm -hmm. not using plastic when we're traveling is the hardest thing, especially if we're traveling abroad. Um, you definitely want to go for a harder plastic bottle instead of those squishy ones, Mm -hmm. right? Which are more loaded with chemicals. We don't even know where, where they've been sitting. They've been sitting in the sun. Those toxins leach into the water and then we drink them more often than not. It's like, it's really poor quality water. So, uh, filtered water is really, really great. Spring water. If you have access to it, Reverse osmosis water, if you can put a filtration system into your home, add mineral drops back into the water. That's something that I do. We do as a family every single day, but the quality of your water is like the first source of detoxification, right? Um, Sweating. We all have forever chemicals. They found, they find thousands of chemicals in umbilical cords. So our babies are already coming into the world full of toxins because mothers are exposed to them, right? Um, so supporting your, your body, my kids, now that they're a little bit older, I put chlorophyll drops into their body, which is a natural detoxifier. Mm -hmm. So simple things that you can do, sweat more, get into a sauna, right? Uh, work with a lymphatic drainage specialist to work on your detox pathways. Make sure that you're eliminating properly, right? Two or three bowel movements every single day is essential. People are also, this is another thing that shocks me is we're walking around chronically constipated Mm -hmm. and people are like what do you mean you go to the bathroom every day I was like aren't we meant to go to the bathroom after every meal like that's a good bowel movement no like yeah and again it's going to be different for people who are on a different fasting protocol if you're on a more ketogenic Mm -hmm. um diet then obviously your, your bowel movements are going to shift um but I would say yeah looking at your diet eat the rainbow this is like a really fun thing that just it needs to stay viral eat the rainbow. Whenever you go to the grocery store, buy um, tons of plant-focused foods from the earth Mm -hmm. with zero ingredient labels. You'll get the phytochemicals from those foods, those bright colors that work as an antioxidant within the body, right? That help your body heal. And some people listening might be like, no, I can't do fiber. Fiber is not good for me. 
don't don't take me down that yeah. road. But then it's like, well, you might be one of the people where we need to heal your digestion first. Right. And then you can slowly, incrementally increase your fiber over time, especially because the science around all these diets, the one truth that we're understanding from the gut microbiome is that you can increase the good quality bacteria in your gut if you're diversifying the types of plant fibers that you're consuming every single week. No probiotic necessary, no medication needed. And if you're increasing the good quality bacteria in your gut, we know that serotonin or feel good happiness hormone is produced in our gut. Right. You're supporting the microbes that are going to help you feel better. So start are you fiber. are you yeah. mainly plant based? Yeah, I would say like I'm 90% plant focused. Okay. And with my clients, like, look, I have some people who are on paleo and they thrive. I have some people who are vegan and right. they thrive. Okay. Like, it really depends on you. For me, I would say after having my babies, though, like every time I eat animal protein, I just, I feel the animal cry or I just get emotionally kind of attached to the animal. Um, not always. And sometimes I can feel when my body is like really craving animal mm -hmm. protein. But that for me is also insight to the deficiencies that I might have. Right. And maybe I'm not eating a, a big enough variety of food. food and nutrients or not getting enough sleep or sunlight or too much stress. Like we really have to address everything. And look at the person for their unique needs. Yeah, but let's own in on that. Like, have the diet. There's not one perfect diet for every single person on this planet. Your perfect diet should be as unique as your thumbprint. And if you want to eat to optimize your health, kind of a really great rule of thumb that I work with my clients on that works every single time, eat more like your ancestors did. If you follow a diet that's closer to what your ancestors ate, generally you start to feel a little bit better. Right. Your symptoms subside. Because that's what our DNA is meant to do. You got it. Um, as we come to the end, Mona, I know you've given so much great advice, but for all the people listening, if there's one thing you could say that you've learned on your journey that's greatly impacted who you are today, what would that thing be? Don't ignore... Um, how significant or insignificant you're making the stress or sadness within you be. You might be an adult and you feel like you've gotten over all of the stuff that happened to you as a kid. And like I said before, like I, I had a great childhood. I had great parents, but there was some really uncomfortable, tragic stuff that made me feel um, like I was an adult too quickly. And so dealing with that pain and trauma kind of allowed my nervous system to come into balance and you know the gut brain axis the vagus nerve understanding our nervous system is such a key component when we're considering our overall health so if you're somebody who just has this lingering thing from your past as much as you feel you've gotten over it but the emotion if i were to talk to you about it still brings up emotion chances are that's still living within your body and it needs some liberation liberate that first and i promise you the healing protocol gets so much easier that is such a wonderful piece of advice and it kind of like ties it all back to what we started with. Connect with yourself, you connect it. with your spirituality, whatever that means to you and connect with your own narrative you and it. what healing means to you because each and every one of us is so different. You got it. Yeah. Think about how, what was your energy when you came into the world? If you were to just imagine what you were like as a little boy or a little girl, what colors did you like to wear? What games did you like to play? Did you like to play at the playground uh, at the water, in the sand, or in a forest, right? What music did you want to listen to? How did you wear your hair? What foods did you love eating? Who did you love to play with, mm -hmm. right? Try to recall as much about your vibration and your energy, and then do more of that. Awaken that within you, because sadly, after the age of, what, six or seven, we, lose we that. repress all of those things because we try to fit in. You know, for me, I just, I wasn't Indian enough. I wasn't white enough. They put me in French immersion. I didn't speak either language. So I was constantly like trying to fit in instead of just letting my inner light shine, right? So I feel best now as a woman when I'm more in tune with that inner vibration. That's really beautiful. Thank you, Mona. I've been wanting to get you on the podcast for a while and thank you for taking Thank out the you. time and, and you have your own Bye. podcast and I want people I to do. tune into that. Yeah. So I have a podcast that's called rooted in wellness, really merging the world of ancient healing rituals with modern day medicine. I think that if the future looks like there's integration between this wisdom that has been around for thousands and thousands of years, taking what nature has to give us to heal 
with the benefits of like all of the biometrics that modern day medicine is giving us, my God, the world, we would heal so much faster if we all just came together. So guys, please follow her. I love your episodes. I think they're so insightful and you are just building something amazing. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for having me.